Jeez, those are alive. Holy frisholies. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Excuse me while I smell some fries. Excuse me while I smell some fries. Yeah. Excuse me while I eat some pies. While I, I lick pie, these I eyes. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> um, that's creepifying. <laughs> yeah, creepifying. <coughs> the eye juice. Oh, that's really... It's yeah. only creepy if a guy does it. You know that, John. No, actually, it's, I, I have a problem with eye things. I had a bad experience. Of licking does eyes? It bug you? Does it bug you in uh, horror movies when, you know, the guy's unconscious or whatever, and then it zooms in on his face and the eyes open? <sighs> no, it's if they do something, like the beginning of First Contact where he has a dream and they're drilling to the eye. It's not... <laughs> hey, DT. I've... I've... I've been accused even of my eye doctor when she talked about getting surgery for my eyes to fix things. She's like, you're turning a little green. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a thing I can do. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't think she said eyes. I'm my eyeball and I'm at the eye doctors and they're like, we're just going to swab this. You've got a little something like on, <laughs> on your eye. <laughs> and they're taking this swab and going oh. in, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah you would have hated that. Yeah. See, I didn't think she said eyes. I thought she said thighs. Excuse me while I lick these thighs. I and I was like... Well, I, mean, I guess you could go there, but John and I are apparently uh, on the on same page. Yeah. Or, or yeah. half of us are perverted. As usual. What do you mean half of us? What's not perverted about licking eyes? I'm just saying. Thighs. That's pretty yeah, No, no, Max, of ET, just no. no. <laughs> John has a problem with licking thighs and eyes. No, what thighs if they are? Kentucky <laughs> Fried Chicken Thighs. I, I love chicken thighs. I love right? chicken thighs. Excuse me while I kiss the chicken. I mean, I could stop eating beef and only eat chicken. I'm not going to because I also like beef. But if I had to, I could totally eat just chicken. Just chicken? I have a bone to pick with fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. well, this, is good, this is gonna blow your guys' mind. Why is it that when you get KFC chicken, the drumstick is like this big, but the thigh is huge? How is that bird even standing up? It's because it's hormones. They, they don't give you all from the same you, one. Did you see all those videos of the, you know, chickens that are just like in the tiny little cages? You know, they don't they don't stand on those legs. They just kind of lie there, you know. Looking succulent. Yeah, we, we see the thing is, we see that all the time around here because we have a Tyson chicken plant and oh, you have chicken no, uh, funny story. I'm things going around. Alabama. I'm like driving from Atlanta all the way across on I 10 and all across the south. And I'm going through Alabama and there's like chicken feathers all over on the sides of the road. Honestly, I guess it could have been Arkansas. I might have been mistaken. <laughs> Going there. At that point, I just can't tell the difference. I'm playing around with settings. Alabama, Arkansas, uh, I don't know. Hi, everyone. Have... Welcome to our pre-ramble. We're rambling pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. I've, I've destroyed Super productivity rambling. with puppy vi puppy pictures. and. Oh, my God. He totally did. I am, I am watching the puppy Twitter like... You guys see me looking down at my phone and watching puppies. <sighs> Maximus DT is feeling fat and sassy tonight. And you know what? That's what we like. We like yeah. fat and sassy. Sass is good. Cheers. I'm playing with settings. Oh, there we go. Let's try that color. So, Kathy, what did you do this week? Like thighs. Stuff. I, uh... So, there were things I got at Adepticon, and as you all know, last week I finally got my, at the end of last week, I finally got my painting area uh, set up again, after all the craziness. And so, I had two things that were given to me at the convention. Uh, a TARDIS, which I'll even, like, I don't know if this will work, but, I'll, hold on. This totally is a ramble. So, I have this TARDIS. Yeah, looks like a police box. Wee -oo! So, 
that's a Reaper Miniatures TARDIS. And someone gave it to me for Tiny Kathy. So I painted that this week. And this is like the most adorable. Hold it there. Hold it still, Kathy. Yeah. Hold, hold it still. Hold it still. Don't move. Hold it. Hold it there. Don't move it. Hold it there. It's, it's a making unicorn. it bigger. It's That's what a she unicorn said. Unicorn stuffed animal. That's about the best thing. See? I thought it was a little praying man. I was like, what is that? A monk? <laughs> I did. Uh, okay. I did this uh, freehand design on it to make it look like it's got a pattern on the fabric, and then That's I did cool. a plaid on its feet and its horn. So. Uh, my friend Antoine Bergeron sculpted it. Uh, the originally sculpted for his daughter, but now he's got it in production. Uh, and him and uh, my friend Paul, who's the one who gave it to me, they came down. Paul came down from Canada. Uh, they do Geeks of the North podcast up in Canada, up in uh, Quebec. So, so uh, that's where the unicorn came from. And I love it so much because as people who know me know, I love stuffed animals in a ridiculous way. What? And so does my husband. And what? that's why we're together. Well, <laughs> that's the only reason. But anyway, so those were the two things that I painted this week. And they were solely for me. Like, just... That's awesome. Just for me, not for sale or not for commission. Um... I did complete uh, the raffle model, which we'll be raffling off for our Patreons. Um, oh, we got to do that today, too. Um, so so that's done. And uh, what else did I do? Oh, I discovered a, a new game called Stuffed Fables. And in keeping with the whole stuffed animal thing, this is like a bunch of little uh, stuffed animal characters that you're playing in... Uh, in order to save your, uh, the, the, the little girl who is, you know, I guess the person who owns all the stuffed animals. Hmm. And, uh, a board game? it's, it's, it's almost like a choose your own adventure. Yeah, it looks very interesting. Game. It, it's, it's made by Plaid Hat Games. Yeah, Plaid Hat Games, yeah. And, uh, I'm just, like, in love with it. I want it. Uh, uh the wolves look like they're available cool. online for free if you guys want to take a look at it. Yeah, uh, stuffed fables from Plaid Hat Games. Uh, check it out because it just looks like a lot of fun, and also it's family friendly if you want to, you know, play it with your kids. Oh, cool! Wow, those are really good. Maxim DT just uh, shared a picture of a uh, Firefly crew he painted. It's in the chat room. It's pretty good. Oh, cool! <laughs> nice. I can't see it. Describe it to me. Oh, wow. I love that. Um, I love the uh, Hawaiian shirt. That's, those look really great. They look uh, really accurate to the, uh, to the, to the TV show. show. Yeah. yeah. So imagine someone took models and painted them very accurate to the uh, TV show, and you got it. Nice. Nice job. Nice. Painted by myself, he says. <laughs> you know what? We've got to actually do a uh, dice head gallery pretty soon. We haven't done one. Yeah, we haven't done one at all. We need to, to do one. It's yeah, it's like stuff that people paint for their games. Yeah, what, what it is is it was it's back from the old Mount John days, and what it is is we would have people take their stuff, send us pictures of it, and we would do a um, slideshow of the of the models, and if they wanted us to give them critiques, like how, hey, how can you do this better? How can I do this better, Kathy? Or, you know, okay. and just, you know, and also shows that, you know, also progress reports, because people, well, you know, they started, this is what I'm at, and now I am here, type thing. You know what I'm saying? You want to hit one for quarter two, uh, early July? You know, yeah. Have them send it in, and then do first show in July, we'll do that? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, make a note to bounce it on the on the show. We'll do that then. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah it's super cool. Should you do anything else besides painting stuff for yourself and finding new games? Uh, well, I played my uh, weekly D and D on Monday, and uh, uh, no one died. Um, what? But my character as a fighter has 
has encountered these clerics who are, you know, into casting mind spells on me. You know, things that require a charisma roll for my, you know, negative one modifier charisma. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, so I've been banished a few times. And it's taking a mental toll on my character. And my character is starting to feel like the rest of the crew does not have her back in these situations. So she's starting to become a little more selfish. So I'm feeling like her alignment is starting to shift from chaotic good to chaotic neutral because of this. Like she's less inclined to go and uh, sacrifice herself for, this, for saving, you know, one of the other members of the group. Because where were they, you know, when she needed help? <laughs> so that's that's a, that's my D and D game right now. Um, so that was on Monday, but yeah, so that's kind of my my week, really. I mean, we did laundry, but nobody wants to hear about that. No. <laughs> I meant laundry. Yeah. John, did you do anything fun, interesting this week? Uh, I played four different. I played four games uh, from three different systems this week. Awesome. Uh, I did uh, a game of Malifaux for the slow grow that I had forgotten was starting down at Third Eye Games in Annapolis. So I put together a poll real quick. Everyone chose the faction I owned least models for. <laughs> no so, way! The Rezzers? Yeah, that's, I put that in just because it, uh, Twitter allows four, and I'm like, ah, I own two Rezzer Masters, let's put that in, and then ah, everyone ah, voted ah, for it. So. Because they're awesome. Uh, well, you know, played a game. Well, I, I drew. It was 8-8 eight, eight tie, which is fine. Uh, it was very, very favorable group of schemes and strategies for my opponent. So I feel good that I managed to pull the tie out. Then I played, uh, Friday I played a game of Infinity. Uh, my opponent pulled out a last minute draw by the skin of his teeth. We had a really good game though. Uh, we're playing all the, uh, the Dire Post missions, which are more story-centric missions, not just the standard kill each other and, you know, score points not their tournament system at all and we're very much enjoying those and then also friday i played our myself and not brushheads dave's game of armada for our league it lasted two turns it was horrific <laughs> my dice were like what do you need okay you got that oh you need this one thing one in eight chance you got that too oh was... you you had the golden horseshoe inserted up the butt oh my god it was it was bad it was. Uh, I'll go into it more on the next uh, minis and movies in a week and a half or so, but uh, it was <laughs> it was bad for him, unfortunately. And then today I got a game of Infinity and against a different opponent. Had a good time, but uh, I only had a small win. But man, it was because I crushed him too hard. Why are you being so mean to people? Hard. Well, it's you know you just play, and then it just so happens that he was rolling great for some of his dodge rolls, but it didn't matter when. You know, it comes down to it, and he can't make his uh, rolls to control the objective and activate stuff. He's like, I'm going to turn on this console. I need a 13 or less on a 20-sided. Fail. Fail again. I'll bring another guy in. They'll try. Fail. Fail again. I'm out of orders. <laughs> I'm like, there's nothing you can do for that. And then my space pirate, um, with hair much like Jackie's hair, a little darker right now, but that's where it's going to end up, Came in from the side of the board, ran away to the center room, and just started shooting people with her giant, uh, basically shotgun. And, That's about what I would do, too. Yeah. Uh, it was great. It, they, they all, you know, he's making great dodge rolls. He's like, ah, oh, I'm dodging in front of this template, and get, he can't get away from me. And he doesn't want anyone to try and shoot me, so he's just dodging. And then I have another guy come in the front, and come around and just start shotgunning people with an actual shotgun. And... It ended kind of poorly with him. He ended up with, uh, you really need doctors to do the good stuff with this. And to, because it's basically, there's a viral outbreak, and the doctors can heal people from it. And one of the objectives is to get the hazmat officer, who, unfortunately, the first turn, the viral outbreak, randomly scatters in a direction, scattered onto where she was standing. <laughs> She's okay, but it means if we go in there to try to get her, we have to be in base space to get her, we might get infected so you need doctors to heal you excellent well he already had two doctors in the room and the space pirate killed them both so he had one more 
but he didn't have the orders to get her in the room. So he's like, I'll hang out here. I've got a good guy with a heavy machine gun covering the doorway. So I had a different guy run across, and I'm like, well, I could try and shoot her. But I think it'd be infinitely more funny if I use this adhesive launcher to just stick her in place so she can't do anything else. So I did that. He was not pleased. Launcher? Oh, yeah. Well, it's made for, like, giant robots and drones and stuff. Like, just stay there. We want to get the technology later, but we don't want to kill like anyone. Like a tape gun. Like yeah, a well, thing? Like a giant glue gun. So I just... Pfft, stick her in place, and... <laughs> he thought that was rude, but... He thought it was That's hilarious. That's awesome. I love it. Uh, so I end up, uh, I forget the actual points. I mean, I guess it was probably 5-1 win. Um, because uh, we only got two turns in because at the beginning of his turn three, he was in retreat. And Infinity has a cool rule where if you're in retreat, at the end of that turn, that player's turn, the game's over. Nice. Uh, I've actually had my first tournament I went into. My buddy, like, whooped my butt so hard. It was crazy. Uh, he literally put me into retreat by one point. So I had my turn, and in my turn, I killed just enough to get a victory over him because he put me in retreat and he didn't have any chance to come back. So, it's an interesting rule to put in the game, but no, I had a good time doing that. Um, life stuff's going good, uh, putting together models and stuff. I mean, awesome. I'm, what, 125 days into the hobby streak? Yeah, that's crazy like that. amazing. Insane. So, uh, yeah, well, it's all good. Hey, so I got my nails done. The <laughs> flamingo pink. That was it. Manny Petty's yesterday with my pals Jen and Stephanie. While the guys played bolt action in the basement. That was my other thing. I forgot to mention that. So, <laughs> Gonzo. Or, uh, we, 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 have a guest, uh, we have a guest host here this week. Who yeah, we... guest before weirdos. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, of course. We, we, she should have gone first. <laughs> well, we didn't think of that because I was trying to direct us quickly. It's okay. I forgot I was here, too. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do this week? I played a couple of fun games, actually. Uh, my one friend wanted to try out my faction in War Machine. Uh, he's pretty new. He's playing Crix because we were able to show him that I had a lot of Crix models. Uh, it was very cool because he recently purchased a 3D printer, so he made extremely crude versions of the models. I mean, they were rough, but it was so awesome. <laughs> they just came out of nowhere. He just made them. It was it's like better magic. than cardboard printed stand-up things. I should so. tell him about that. I don't think he knew about those. They they worked, you know. Yeah. Ever. I mean, if you're strapped for cash and you just want to, you know, play a game, that works. He spent, he, I'm going to guesstimate, he probably spent about six and a half hours printing models to play meh, a three and a half hour game to realize he hates Grimkin. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, at least now he knows. Yeah. Yes, that's true. He didn't spend any, well, much money. Classic is negligible. Yeah, the printer was like four hundred dollars, but you know. It's got more uses. My buddy just got one. He's gonna do some, some <coughs> Legion terrain and stuff. It's gonna be pretty cool. Oh yeah, he he did make some terrain with his just some you know basic model stuff, and they look nice. Uh, oh yeah, Simple it's definitely stuff not like, that like a ten thousand dollar one or anything where he can make actual models. That's more of a casting thing, but it yeah. works in a pinch. That's for sure. Yeah. So we did that. Uh, I've been playing a ton of Sea of Thieves for the Xbox. A little unhealthy. Um, well, if you're having fun, it's not unhealthy, and you're going to work, so it sounds like it's fine. That's true. <laughs> I'm just denying the sleep part. You can you can sleep on the seas. There's a lot of downtime in the game. You will have plenty of time in your life to sleep. Trust me. I hope so. Yeah, it was weird. I watched a video of someone playing uh, the Sea of Thieves, and they are taking their boat and they were riding up to another ship. And he was steering it and everything, and he let go of the steering wheel, let the boat, and the boat coasted the whole time, coasted next to someone else's ship, jumped off of his ship, jumped on the other person's ship, ran to their thing, stole their treasure box, and then jumped back onto their ship and drove away. Oh, <laughs> I was like, damn. Oh. <laughs> and it's, it's a free game on the market right now. You can play it if you have the Game Pass. Hmm. Uh, I am almost at Legendary Pilot, Pirate. I'm at level 30 on everything. 
There's only one guy who's legendary, and he's a streamer. Uh, and so because it's free on the market, there's all these kids after school, and there's so much booty to be stolen. I mean, I've just ruined people's game experiences. <laughs> oh, you're a pirate. There are no rules. Yeah. Just... That's the rules. Yeah. The rules are there are no rules. Yeah, yeah there's and you're a, a lot pirate. of you're, you're supposed to ruin people and betray them. That's what pirates do. <clears throat> One of my favorite things to do in the game right now is you can get drunk, and if you get too drunk, you puke a lot. Um, I've been <laughs> saving my puke in buckets and throwing it at people as a really offensive attack. Nice. A really. That's really incredibly offensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hats off for 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 thinking outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to prepare for that. That is a premeditated attack. Um, Should you throw puke at us? The fuck. <laughs> I don't know how you react to that. <laughs> Usually about like that, and then you can shoot them twice <laughs> with a blunderbuss and they're dead. Uh, oh, also, I played in a crazy session of D&D. It's kind of bittersweet. We're, we're playing through in a straw, the Strahd book, mm -hmm. and oh, I can book. sense it's definitely going to be towards more end game. And I feel like there's some people who are going to die. I, we might all die. We're all in a very compromising situation. As long as it's epic, who cares? As long as yeah. you got a great That's story true. from it. As long as you're not space cow. Yeah, definitely. We might all go down in a blaze of glory, but hey, that's it's glory. Yeah, as long as it's not a space cow death, torture. you're okay. Uh, everyone in the party absolutely hates me. I'm a sorcerer with wild magic. And ah! <laughs> I, I don't know. I've been getting really strange with role-playing, so I'm playing a 12-year-old child, uh... I don't know if you guys ever heard of, like, the Genghis Kid from Pokemon. It's like a wild child, but that's my character. Uh, and they just can't stand it, because wild magic and children should never... <laughs> it's like guns. Children and gun don't mix. And neither oh, do children that sounds awesome! Magic. That's amazing. <laughs> that sounds like a really cool character idea. And I've always thought that Sorcerers with Wild Magic had a huge potential for role-playing. Oh, it's so much. Uh, so far, it's worked in my favor, the wild magic. I've rolled pretty poorly. I rolled a couple 20s. No one's turned purple yet, but it's been pretty <laughs> devastating. I actually you killed know, a character a couple sessions ago. They're still mad about that. If you but, turned uh, me purple, I would not mind. I'm just saying. <laughs> if we played together, and uh, yeah, I, I'd love that. Oh my god, I'm purple! Okay. <laughs> oh no! Now my hair, my pink hair, looks even better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, I just got a message from Dan. Uh, I can't show yeah. you, Dan. Arky Dan. Arky Dan. Tectonic oh, Graph Dan. Because uh, I asked when he was going to want to come in on the podcast to do stuff. Because uh, we got a couple of things we're going to paint and give away on it for his stuff. And he just told me that he just created a bunch of new shit. Some oh, new, great. new, new stuff. And he sent me pictures of it. I haven't got permission to show it yet. But, oh, yeah. Awesome. Um, he's got some really good stuff. Uh, that, ooh, uh, ooh, yeah, I want it. <laughs> I want it already. Let me ask him if I can show it. Let me see if he'll say all I can say is no or yes, I mean. Is Dan the guy that had his own music when he was on the show? Probably about like uh, four episodes no. ago? No, <laughs> that was Bubba. <laughs> oh, that was epic. That was really good. I feel good. like everyone should have their own uh, theme music. Well, I mean, you can, but he, he just, he, he set it up perfectly. I was... I was pleased. It was very amusing. Ooh, he said I could show it. So hold on. And it got and it got not brushhead Dave to listen to the podcast, which never happens because I mean, he says, and I quote, "I don't want to hear you talk most of the time, even when we're together." Ooh, he said I could what? show these. So give me so a second, guys. So does he just want to see you visually instead of hear your voice? Because I know there's some people who like that. He's being funny. He doesn't. He doesn't listen to podcasts because we don't talk about stuff that he really cares about. What does he care about? Oh, it's hard to tell I... with that. <laughs> he, he's more War Machine. He plays other stuff, but he's more War Machine. We don't talk about quite enough. He, oh. he, he 
listens to the War Machine only podcast mostly, which is fine. That's his thing. Yeah. And he doesn't watch it because, you know, he doesn't like to be tied to his computer when he's at work. When he's at work, he works. Listening to podcasts is just something he does in the background, which is cool. Hats yeah, definitely. <laughs> Jim and I have been spending some time listening to uh, some bolt action podcasts because uh, that's kind of the game that he and I are interested in. And he's been making a ton of terrain and he's been painting a ton of bolt gun models or bolt action models. And, uh, so that's kind of been our jam recently. Jam. I've been watching a lot of uh, Armada stuff just to help myself and my partner out. Cause my partner's not having nearly as good a luck in Armada as I am. Yeah, he's getting his butt uh, butt kicked a lot. So. Hmm. I wonder what's the uh, what's he doing? That's uh, you know, is it his builds or his dice? Uh, a little bit of builds, a little bit of dice. I mean, a little bit of just bad luck happens. And we all built fleets that do the same thing, which is getting close and murder each other. I just have shenanigans to go with my murdering. So I can be like, I don't want to get close to you yet. Why don't you move another ship? That's a shenanigan I have. Nice. Yeah. So I also have the only large ship in the game. No one else, everyone else has got medium or smaller. So that thing just sort of runs through going like, you're a tiny ship, I'm killing you. You're a tiny ship, I'm killing you. And just rolls to the battlefield. Everyone's like, I shoot a little bit, run away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload these. Dan said I could show these off real quick. Oh. Um, so give me a second. I'm going to upload them up here. Give so what, are, what will we be looking at? Dan had decided to print off, and he's doing some new things. So give me a second. I'm going to do this on the fly. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Dungeon gonna, terrain. He's doing, looks like he's doing dungeon terrain, guys. That's legit. Nice. Um, so. I love that stuff. I mean, I've got one of the Dwarven Forge sets my buddy gave me because he was, he's in the military. He's like, I'm never going to get a chance to use it. So I'll leave it with you so you use it. And yeah. it's just great stuff. It adds so much oh, visually to the cool. game. Yeah, Dwarven Forge does a really good job. This looks I'm, neat, though. Yeah, yeah, here's a table that he's kind of made with a bunch of terrain and stuff. I want to see it bigger. Why won't it go bigger? It's got as big as oh. it'll go. That's what she said. All right. What? <laughs> there you go. There's Nothing. a big one. <laughs> what if I maximize? Yay! Yeah, that's so very everybody, cool. Everybody who's viewing the uh, podcast on Twitch or on Twitch... Um, can or see YouTube. this awesome dungeon terrain. Oh yes, yeah. on YouTube. Uh, that's looking really cool. Yeah, it looks like it. Um, I don't know if he's doing the tables and stuff. I don't know if he's three D printing that, but I know he's. Oh, just... I imagine okay. all the wooden stuff is his, and then yeah. the other stuff might just be stuff he has, or maybe he got a three D printer. He's I, some stuff it's out. looking like three D print uh, plastic stuff. Yeah, which is really cool too. Um, but it's to the same scale. As his dungeon tiles. That's what I'm saying. So once that gets painted yeah. up, that's going to look really nice. Well, see, here's the thing. I could use that for, like, um, what was it? Um, Necromunda train? You could use it for Necromunda, but I was thinking Infinity more of Frostgrave. Terrain? Frostgrave. Frostgrave terrain? Terrain of any sort yeah. in any game. It's a little low tech for Infinity, but, I mean, I'll shoot at somebody anywhere. I don't care. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, there could be old ruins somewhere. Yeah. I mean, definitely dungeon crawling, but you could definitely use this for any type of dungeon crawl game, and you could definitely use it, because you could use these and stack them up and do stuff for uh And this is grade. Tectonic Art Studios, who it's makes crash, these, yeah. Yeah, it's a ton of crap. Awesome, Dan uh, just showed me this. I asked him when he was going to come on so we could talk about some of his product, and he says he's really busy with Kingdom Con and PAX. But he says he's working on new stuff, and he sent me these pictures real quick. So awesome. I was like, ask if I could show them. And he's like, yep, show them. So, awesome. Yeah, and Con, Kingdom Con? Do what? What was it, Kingdom Con? Yeah. Kingdom yeah, Con. that one's uh, in San Diego. San Diego, yeah. Yeah, he says he's, he's getting to ready for that. Me to go, but I'm like, that's just... That's... I absolutely would love to go to that one, but, you know, John and I probably have the same problem. It's time and money. Pretty far, yeah. Time and money. Yeah, it's a little far for me. Yeah, but Jackie's gonna make it to uh, War Machine Weekend, just like all three of you are. 
That's not happening. Oh, cool. There is that's a the one that's I may Saint also Kansas? be able to go to Gen Con. Wait, is that Kansas City or is that St. Louis? St. Louis. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm interchanging those, but I do. So oh, I'm sorry, oh. people from Kansas City, because the ribs are amazing. <laughs> and I'm sorry, people from St. Louis, because, you know, the arch. Good, good save. <laughs> All right, guys. It is time to... Get real alcohol? Get real alcohol. Start Boom. the podcast. Guys, we're going to reboot everything, make sure everything cleans up, get the pre-ramble over with, start Ooh, it up, I and we will stream live to, on Facebook. Know, take this opportunity to... Um, Go pee? Yeah. Yeah.